Hi there, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, friend. We're so glad to be with you today. I was just upstairs writing some letters to some of you, and I just want you to know from the bottom of my heart how much we appreciate you and the way you support this program, uh, realizing as we do that what's more important than homekeeping. And we try to really hit all those subjects that uh, really are important to the home. And that's what we've been doing this week with Pam Stenzel. Uh, we, I taped five interviews with her. This is the third one. And I felt like she was such a great guest and the subject was so important that it required a week. And so if you saw the last two, you know what a dynamic uh, speaker and communicator she is. And uh, so we'll be talking her, to her again today uh, on videotape. And we talked about the importance of the parents when it comes to sexuality uh, because your kids are growing up in an absolutely immoral world and anything goes, but that's not biblical. And the best route for a good family uh, in a good life and a happy life is to go the way God said. So I hope you'll pay attention to this or grandparents or parents, whoever's watching it, Please understand your role in this. And uh, Stephanie and I are going to fix a Southwest turkey bake. Uh, turkey bake, yes, that's right. And um, I think that you'll want this recipe because it's very hearty. Uh, you put it together and all you need is a good salad or something and you've got dinner. So uh, we will enjoy putting that together. But I've been offering all this week this book by Pam, and it's called Sex Has a Price Tag. And oh boy, does it. A lot of you know. A lot of you know of things in your own family where young people have gotten in trouble. And, and on the last program, she talked about the diseases. Oh, she blew me away, and she really educated me, I'll tell you that. So we want to offer you this book for that gift of $15 to the program. Uh, you can call. There's a number for you to call. It's right there on the screen, 1-800-229-0059. Or write to us. We love getting your mail. Thanks for taking time to give us notes of encouragement. It's just great. So that address is on your screen. And this is important, very important book uh, for you to have grandparents or parents to have to really give to the kids and um, let them know what God's plan is for their life and for reproduction and for the enjoyment of sex. Okay. All right, I'm over here with Sister Stephanie. Hi, now. how are you? Oh, I'm good. Yes. This has got everything good in I it. I said no more bakes, but this one's a good one, so it's okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, and what I say doesn't really matter anyway, really, seriously. Oh, it doesn't. It <laughs> most certainly does. So, so. you have, you're going to spray a 9 by 13 pan for me. Mm -hmm. You have corn muffin mix, three quarter cups chicken broth, and an egg. You're going to mix that all together for me. Okay. I have ground turkey which this is a really um, great recipe if you're trying to watch your figure because it's only 267 calories per... Oh, that's yeah. nothing. Yeah. And that's your entree. Yes. So I have ground turkey in here that we've already um, cooked up and we drained. So when you do this, you now, could have a hot this fudge is, sundae. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I am like, no. Okay, so super simple. Can of beans that have been rinsed, drained and rinsed. And it's here's a, where the yumminess comes in. Salsa. Everything in there already made up for you. This is, um, I think this recipe is really going to be a, cloud free, a crowd pleaser. Yeah, so that was a cup of salsa, a can of black beans, and I have a half a teaspoon of ground cumin and an eighth of a teaspoon of ground red pepper, which it's not really ground red pepper. It's really pepper. But And this uh, chicken broth is just going to add to it. Yeah. I never ever thought, thought of, of putting that. chicken broth in corn muffin mix. Mm -hmm. Just didn't think of it. It's, so something I wonder new what today. that would be like just to, if you're going to bake them. Oh yeah, that would be good. Yeah, put do that. Put some cream corn in there. Done. Mm hmm. Done. Yeah. So crafting. I found out crafting is extremely dangerous. Oh, she about cut her finger off. I well. I'm not going to exaggerate, but I did cut it pretty, and, and I have to be careful how I hold it because there were. <laughs> I know, and it doesn't look good the way she has to hold it. No, it doesn't. But, but so, yeah. you had these 
they I was cutting with scissors, okay? And I was cutting wire and I had to really cut down and my finger was right there and it sliced into it and it wouldn't stop bleeding. Two paper towels and a dish rag later and I was home alone and she I mean, put it would, the, didn't matter. It wasn't. She put the bloody side on Facebook. I did because everyone needed to see when my When I saw craft. that, I thought, oh my goodness. Can yep. I lick my fingers? Oh, your show. There. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so I'm mm. mixing all this together. You're supposed to let it simmer for a few minutes, but we're not gonna because we speed cook. Okay, sprayed nine by thirteen pan. Mm -hmm. I probably just moved that. Okay, I'm gonna leave it. We're not gonna move that. We'll leave it right there. Don't okay. touch it. Okay. I'll back off. Because <laughs> I have a habit of doing that. They'll be right on it, and I'll be like, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're gonna put this in the bottom. But this smells really, really those good. Those of you with any cooking experience have to agree. This, this is I mean, great it's ingredients. Super simple. And you know what else I would put in here? Refried beans. Yes. I would totally put refried beans in here because I love them. Well, I, it's been a few years ago that I discovered finally they quit putting lard in refried beans. Yes, they have fat free refried beans now. So, and, and this is still take, a little bit hot. Look at how beautiful that look is. Look at that. Oh, I need cheese too. Um, yes. Okay, so this was a corn muffin mix, three quarter cup of chicken broth, who thought of it, and an egg. I think this is a, a absolute exceptional recipe. I haven't tasted it yet. I'm making this this week. The whole, oh, I bet, I bet guys would like this. This is hearty. Your husband would really like this. Yeah. I, I Look love, how nicely that cuts. It's beautiful. Let's see if we have any more cheese. Oh, we do. And uh, just get yourself a good salad because you don't need bread. It's got cornbread in it. Right. So then I have cheese and I'm mm -hmm. just putting it over the top. And you only bake it for like 15 minutes because you're only baking the corn muffin mix mm -hmm. and melting the cheese. All right. Ta -da. I, th I think some of our camera, camera people want us to get through right? so they can taste it. Is it my turn? Oh, my. I know. That's, mm. that's like a good meal mm -hmm. right there. It and is. It's so easy. Let me turn around here. It's still hot. We did it. We did it. That corn muffin mix <laughs> adds something that Bisquick does not. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So good. Okay, it's called oh my gosh. Southwest Turkey Bake. And of course, the turkey was the uh, turkey sausage, which is loaded with seasoning it's also. If you want this recipe, information is coming up on your screen. We'll send it to you any way you want it. We've got email. And if you still write letters, uh, that information is coming also. And uh, then you're going to hear my interview with Pam Stenzel. And if you heard the last two, you know she's great. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, Pam, uh, we've blocked off a week for this. I think we could have maybe blocked off a couple <laughs> weeks. I, I don't know a more important subject right now than this because the, the standard is so low, um, f even for adults. It's disgraceful. See, I, I still read Dear Abby, <laughs> stuff uh. like that, and um, really listen to what even married people are saying and... Uh, and single adults, we're not talking about junior high and high school. Right. I mean, they just live just immoral lives that um, that's what brings the nation down. Right. With, and I do believe in revival. I, I believe you're one of these revival speakers, and I thank God for you. On the last program, we uh, talked about disease, and uh, you certainly have educated me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think as uh, we discussed in that, that when I was a kid, there were two or three, yep. we call them venereal diseases. Yeah, they, VD back in the day. Um, but you came up with probably 20 or so and how serious they are. But today we, we said we would talk about that first line of defense is the home. It's, it's not the church. Right, it's, it's the, the home. parents. And, and, and I, it, we alluded to it earlier, parents are the primary educator of, of their mm -hmm. kids all the way around. And this is not just true about sexuality. It's true 
about faith formation, right? So mm -hmm. Deuteronomy says very quickly, mom and dad, you're to be talking about your faith. You're going to be talking about your values to your children when they get up in the morning, when they walk in the way, and when they go to bed at night. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a lot to me. That sounds like every day. And, mm -hmm. I, and I always tell parents, if your teenager hasn't recently looked at you and rolled their eyes mm -hmm. and gone, oh, <laughs> You've told me a million times. You failed. <laughs> You're not talking enough. That's my payday. Uh -huh. You know, so it's so important as parents that we communicate constantly, consistently with our kids. And and I, I used to have youth pastors that sometimes say to me, well, Pam, we talked about sex last year um, on February, on Valentine's Day with our kids, so we don't <laughs> need to talk about it anymore. I'm like, What? I mean, MTV is going to talk about sex today, even though they probably brought it up yesterday. hours. <laughs> and it'll probably be the next day. And you think you had one talk with your child and that's enough? It's not enough. We have to consistently be talking to our kids. Now, I've raised three children. They're all grown um, and doing well. Thank goodness. My daughter, I have one, one girl and two boys. My daughter's the only one that's married. Um, and married an amazing young man. I have an, I, I always tease, if you can survive dating the sex lady's daughter, you're doing really well. So, <laughs> yes. so he's a great young Did man. Did he come into your house just yeah, right. <laughs> <spirit> trembling? <laughs> yeah, when he found out. It, but, uh, but no, he's awesome. And, and, and I have a grandbaby that's three. So it, that's another whole fun. Of, okay, what was it like with your daughter? That's what yeah. I want to know. Well, my daughter was the typical teenager that did the rolling of her eyes. And you told, she used to do this, mom, I can do your talk for you. It's like, <laughs> you know, but, but here's the thing as parents, well, there's a few things I always say to parents and, 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 and we, we were able to, to film an entire talk to just parents here at CTN and it's, it was an amazing experience to kind of go over. Parents, first of all, they, when it comes to sexuality, you need to know what's going on. And, and for, that's why I love it when I speak to students in a church, if I'm in a church setting and not a school setting, I want the parents there. I want them sitting there with their teenager mm -hmm. while we have this discussion because that, that puts them on the same page. So parents, you have to have the information and there's a lot of great information out there for parents. Um, you know, books and other things that you can get to, to educate yourself so you know. And then parents, you have got to quit being your friend. I don't, your generation was so much better. I, my mom, I got to tell you, I don't remember one minute in my teenage years where my mom cared whether or not I liked her, ever. <laughs> and yet this generation of parents are like, well, if I have those rules, my kids might not like me. I said, this is ridiculous. My kids did not like me when they were teenagers. I had news for my kids. I have friends. Uh, <laughs> don't really need them. And they will have <laughs> right. They will have a lot of friends. They will have one mother. Mm -hmm. so, so, so here's the thing, mom and dad. You are responsible to teach values, not the church, mm -hmm. not the youth pastor, not some Christian school you drop them off in. You are responsible to pass your faith on to the next generation. You're responsible to be talking about it and to be building those things. You're responsible. And, and, and I've always said this, I have a bunch of rules, which I'll go over in a second. Good. But, but when I would share them with parents, some of them would say, well, those rules are really strict. Your kids are going to rebel. So what'd y'all do? Have a powwow with your kids and ask <laughs> them what rules they're planning to obey? And then have, is that how we do it as parents now? This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm the parent. I make the rules. It's not a democracy. Mm -hmm. My job is to have those rules and to and and to oversee. And your job is to obey. That that's mm -hmm. what Scripture says. Obey your parents. Mm -hmm. Not if you like them. Each have a role. Not if you agree with them. <laughs> obey them. So so um. It, and here's the thing. Here's the spiritual principle. And I, I want parents to hear this. I will never stand before God and answer for what my children choose to do. Mm -hmm. I will stand before God and answer for what I did, mm -hmm. for how I taught, for what the you values. Didn't do. Yeah, that's what I answer to. My kids answer for their decisions. If they choose to go the wrong way and, and go against mm -hmm. what they know is right. the right thing to do, that's their deal, that's not mine. So some rules, first rule, basic general rule in my house was no dating at all until you're 16. So some parents will go, wait, I wanted 18. Some said they wanted 30, that's their deal. In my house, that would not happen until they were 16. And there's some reasons for that. I know clinically I can show you that if we can delay dating until at least 16, we can delay sexual involvement. Mm -hmm. if, if young people start dating younger than that, we can't get them. Yeah, you know what we're talking about, the parents. I have read articles too, I think I kept one upstairs, how when a girl has a really good relationship with her father, yeah. she's far less. Yeah. Uh, apt to get, you know, get messed up sexually. Sure. 
because she's looking for attention. And, and like, I'll, I'll give you a little example. You know, I, that was my main rule about not dating until you're 16. But my, my husband dated our daughter. I know that sounds really weird, but when she was little, he would do really special things yeah. like, I'm just going to take you out. And and he would, we lived on a farm, so he would drive his pickup truck like <laughs> for the farm to the house, have a date. pick her up, open her door, bring her a flower. And he says, you know what, any guy that dates my daughter will have to compete with me. And what he showed, awesome. not only my daughter, but then he showed... Um, my sons by example that this is the honor and respect in which you give women and do you think some guy after my my daughter was treated that well by her father some kid would be able to drive up into our house and honk the horn and say get it I mean this oh is yes happen. and uh, perhaps we have more moms and grandmothers in the audience but uh, boy encourage this with your husband don't yeah. ever stand in the way I'm gonna tell you run real quick one with me my husband uh, passed away when my daughter was 15 mm. And uh, so I felt very insecure about right. her dating and all. So this kid from the church uh, wanted to take her out. It wasn't a date date. It, she was 16 by that time or maybe 17. And uh, they were going in a group. And yeah. so here I am. I don't have a backup of her daddy. So I said, if she's not on the front porch at 1030, I'll kill you. <laughs> That's what I told That's him. Awesome. He looked a yeah. little shocked, and she was back on the porch at 10. It's awesome. So yeah. um, it's good. I, I think that parents probably need to be a little bit more up front. You're up the front. one in charge for heaven's sake. Absolutely, and know that person. Ta have a conversation. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, I, I, you I have to you know to them. Die, exactly but. right. Well, for my boys, one of the rules I had for my sons, my sons were not allowed to even ask a girl on a date even ask until they had gone and spoken in person to her father. And obviously if her father's not there, I still want, you know what I mean, if it's a grandfather or an uncle or, and, and mom, I want a face-to-face -face conversation. And here's why, when a teenage boy can separate a young girl from her family system, she becomes an object to be used. And, and I wanted my son- Say that again. When, when a teenage boy can separate that girl from her family, yeah. She becomes just an object, mm -hmm. just something to be used and then cast aside. I wanted to raise young men who would respect and honor women, and I wanted those my boys to understand that this is somebody's daughter, that this little girl, somebody's sister, that this little girl matters. And, and I tease my youngest son, who's now 23, first girl he asked out was the sheriff's daughter. <laughs> and I know him, right? We lived in a small town. So I called him up. I said, Sheriff, my son's coming to see you. I would like you in full uniform for this conversation. You know, just take your gun out and spin it around. Because I wanted Craig to understand that this little girl that he's taking to the prom is somebody's daughter who mm -hmm. deserves that respect. And I, I tell girls when I tell this story to them live, I say, girls, you are daughters of the King of Kings, mm -hmm. right? Not just your father's daughter. You're a daughter of the King of Kings. You are a princess. You've forgotten who you yourself. are. Yeah. And, and these girls, because girls say to me, well, Pam, if he paid for my date, I owe him something. I'm like, what? <laughs> what did Chick-fil-A cost? Six bucks? What does it cost to go to a movie <laughs> tent? What did he drop at 20? Take the cash. And how many girls I've looked at and I said, I don't care if he bought your dress, rented a limo, dropped 500 bucks. At the end of that night, you ought to be able to look at that boy and say, you had the privilege of being with me for five hours and you don't need a thing else. I am a princess. Mm -hmm. I will be treated as such. So, so teaching, giving boundaries to your kids when it comes to dating, teaching them to respect uh, the other person and to treat them with honor. I always say to kids, guys, your wife's going to be going to prom with somebody else. What do you want him doing with her? Your husband, ladies, is going to, to prom with somebody else. And all of the decisions you that you make here, you will take to that altar with you. Now, how long have you been speaking? 27 years. Yeah. And you probably could write a book on the change of the culture. Yeah. Uh, you could be not, you know, you couldn't be any more important than today when we have this Me Too movement and all these roles are shifting and changing and you've got to believe this one, you've got to believe that one. I think our young people are so confused. Yeah, because we're schizophrenic. What's happened is our culture is, we said for what, decades, when I first started doing this, the culture was like, you can do whatever you want, sleep with you whoever yes. you want. The greatest thing was make sure you have a condom and then everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, well, now all of a sudden, we're trying to have this free sex with no boundaries, sex with completely separated from relationship mm -hmm. 
In other words, it's not about care or love or intimacy. It's simply about the act. We're trying to have that separation, but now we're trying to go back and say, yeah, but hashtag me too. Mm -hmm. like, like, so what is it? Mm -hmm. Either there's a boundary, either, either we have control over our sexuality or we don't. You mm -hmm. choose, and, and you can't have both, and, and our culture is so confusing. And then the other thing, out of this whole Me Too movement in the last year or so, what I've been hearing, and it just drives me insane, is these women from the women's, why aren't we teaching young men to respect women? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I've been doing it for 27 years, yeah. and you were the very people who didn't want that taught in your schools, who told me I couldn't walk into your public school because that was moral, mm -hmm. and I was slut shaming or whatever they yeah. wanted to call it. So you have to decide, we have to decide as a culture who we are. Is, is our sexuality going to be important? Does it deserve a boundary? Is it about treating with respect? Or is it just something we do? Yes, and uh, is there anybody on the planet more hypocritical than Hollywood? Oh, I watched horrifying. one of those award shows for about 10 minutes. They're awfully boring. Uh, and they were just... Uh, just proclaiming me too and this and they they wear a ribbon usually for some kind of awareness here these women are out there half naked yeah talking about <laughs> no. the very group don't that, insult me right the very group that's throwing trash at our kids uh, and, and yeah. it are the ones that i'll hashtag me too now you have to have some about it's insane it's utter we've lost our minds yeah, church wake up we mm. need to uh, mm -mm -mm. We really need to put a spotlight on this hypocrisy yeah, and, and don't absolutely. and do not support it. Absolutely. Um, so, your your daughter, your one and only daughter, rolled her eyes a whole lot going through uh, teenage years. What's it like now that she's? Yeah. Well, see, and I always tease that she was a virgin when she left high school because I would have killed any boy that came near her, <laughs> and I and I had access, right? And then I did the scary thing that all parents have to do and drop my only daughter off at the dorms at Minnesota State University. And, and I remember crying. Like, I was just like, I can't do this. I, and, and my husband's like, are you okay? It's like, I'm not, because I, I wanted to protect her. I wanted to, I, I tried to apply to be her roommate. They, they wouldn't have me. <laughs> but my daughter became a militant virgin in college. And people will ask me what I mean by that. She was pretty quiet about her commitment to sexual purity in high school, because she kind of had to live in my shadow, which probably was not very easy. But when she got to university, she was just Kara. She wasn't the sex lady's daughter, you know. And um, she began to look at her friends and see what was going on and see with her own eyes the culture of just sex hooking up. And, 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 and she looked around and said, this isn't what I want. And, and, and made a decision there, yeah. not only to not do it, but to, to be evangelistic with her friends uh, uh, about helping them make better choices. And I think that's where the proof is in the pudding when you drop them off at college. And we've got horrible statistics today of kids that were raised in church. They go to college. They don't go to church anymore. And um, that's that's what you're preparing them. You're preparing them for the real world right. when they're not attached to your apron strings anymore. They've got to function. And, but I did say to my daughter, there's a few things I'm asking of you as your mother. You, you know what I mean? Just in honor. Mm -hmm. Go to church. Mm -hmm. And then find the campus Christian group on campus. You need to find a group of friends in the midst of the craziness of university. They're there. Yeah, find them, connect with them, and 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 here's the thing. I tell kids this all the time about even marriage and relationships. Opposites might attract when it comes to personality. Opposites never attract when it comes to character. You're going to get exactly what you are. So if you want a man of God who is respectful, who's honored you, who's going to raise your children someday in faith, then you've got to be a woman of God, not act like one, be one. Because it's pretty amazing what happens when you have a man of God is not going to settle for anything but a woman of God. Say that one more person. time about character. Opposites might attract when it, when it comes to personality, never character. You will get what you are. So what's so important for young people then is to build the character in themselves mm -hmm. that will attract that same character to them in a spouse. So my daughter d didn't find my son-in-law in the bar. Mm -hmm. You know, found him at, at, well at the Christian group on campus. Yeah. That's where they met. Yeah. They where where they shared the same values, and so that was an attraction. And that is so important. You yeah, know, whether 100%. you're in high school or whether you're in college, uh, no matter what stage in life you are, uh, we're out of time. But you're going to be with us on the next program. Yes. So stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye.
Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. All right, I am so pleased to offer you this book, Sex Has a Price Tag, and I, I wish that I knew how to really properly explain how different this book is, the way it's laid out with all the good information, and uh, there, uh, just, the, just the way that the author has laid it out and asks questions and then answers them. And every youth pastor ought to have this in his library for sure, but uh, parents need to have this and go over it with their children. No question about it. So for that gift of $15 to the program, we will send it to you. And you can write to us at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Or call 1-800-229-0059. And I think this is a golden opportunity for you uh, on any level. It could be an aunt or an uncle or someone who cares about their nieces and nephews that could get this book because you're not going to get any kind of help from culture today. Adults are just as immoral as uh, we sometimes blame our teenagers and their conduct. The Bible is very clear, and you know what we're talking about this week, basically, is holiness unto the Lord. And maybe that should be preached more from the pulpit. This is what God expects from us, and we get a lot an awful lot of sermons on how to better ourselves and, and feel good about ourselves and all, but that's not exactly what comes out of the Word of God. The Word of God says to follow Him, to be holy because He is holy, and these kind of things need to be transferred to our kids. This kind of information, perhaps they've never heard it before. They've only heard rude, crude filthy jokes perhaps on television and it's time for the Christian families to have a different MO, to have a lot different way in the way they approach this vitally important subject. So that's why we're doing that this week on Homekeepers and I urge you to uh, take advantage to have this book. Maybe it's hard for you to talk about something like this. This book will help you. It really will and you never ever ever will you regret trying to keep your young people on the right track. But we are out of time, so join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.